The next talk, which was already alluded to by Dr. Block is on Gadgetron and the title is Gadgetron Enabling Advanced Imaging AI with Global Clinical Deployment by Dr. Hui She. Thank you. Uh, can you see my slides? Yes, we can. Yes, thank you. So my name is Hui. Uh, I'm working at NIH. It's my pleasure to give this talk today. Uh, my talk is about Gadgetron. So I have uh, nothing to disclose. The outline of my talk. So we will starting by, uh, I will give you a very brief introduction to Gadgetron, but I will point to the results, which uh, if you are interested, uh, you can learn more on this topic. So the main part of my talk will be, how can Gadgetron make a difference? So the key function, in the current Gadgetron, it's its ability to translate from the research to the clinical deployment, which I will give one specific example. How will Gadgetron enable advanced AI application running on clinical imaging device? Then I will demo what we had achieved using Gadgetron, which is a quite a large scale global deployment. And I will conclude my this my uh, presentation by giving you uh, a few more showcase, which I called basically showing the potential of this framework. So what is Gadgetron? Gadgetron is a uh, designed data streaming uh, framework for the advanced medical imaging computing. Uh, it's not a new project uh, per se. It has been developed uh, for the past 10 years and they still are under very active development which I saw the pull request um, almost every day. So what can Gadgetron receive? It can receive the MR raw signals from, from a sequence from the imaging device. Uh, in this case, we can do the uh, MR image reconstruction and further process the image. Gadgetron can also receive the image, for example, DICOM image. Then in that case, you can use the framework as a data processing uh, package. You can program Gadgetron with C++, which is a Gadgetron backbone is built. All these days, uh, many people will prefer either Python or MATLAB or other languages. So Gadgetron has developed very strong support for Python. So you can code up your entire application in Python and run in Gadgetron. That's uh, not a problem. Uh, the last point of Gadgetron is, uh, by growing with Gadgetron, this ISMRD data format is uh, become the standard of the language which Gadgetron received. Uh, it's also supported by the major vendors, for example, Siemens. Um, so you can check the ISMRD repo to learn more. So Gadgetron, it's backbone, it's a program programmable uh, data streaming framework, uh, which uh, if you have a scanner, you can think it's a client. Uh, of your imaging application, then it will communicate and sending data and receive results from Gadgetron, uh, which running as a server um, through the, for example, TCP IP uh, protocols. Then Gadgetron provide uh, um, a rich set of uh, reader and writers to handle different case based format or image format uh, and the other formats which your application may be needed. Then as the developer, from a developer point of view, what developer needs to do is to code up uh, each of these modules, which we call gadget. Uh, they can direct Gadgetron what to put in, uh, become an imaging pipeline through the gadget by tell Gadgetron, for example, using this HTML uh, format. Uh, I gave you one example here. For example, my first gadget maybe do some coil compression, then I can do image reconstruction then maybe I use the partial Fourier. Uh, we can do some uh, image uh, processing to improve image qualities. So by flexibly uh, put together different gadgets, you can reuse your, your, your program modules and you can extend it the functionality as your needs. The setup of the gadget is really considered the clinical imaging scenario. So I want to give you one example. For example, let's say we want to image in the heart with multiple uh, slices. So once one type of imaging is called real-time imaging, you basically image the first slice, 
the image second slice. So from the data acquisition point of view, um, the data acquisition is continuous. So what's very important for the clinical usage, usability, is that we can't wait uh, until the imaging is done, then do the recon. To make the waiting time, uh, minimize the waiting time, the ideal case is after we acquire, for example, slice, first the slice, then recon kick in. So this kind of, of functionality is possible using Guidetron because Guidetron is talking to the imaging device in real time and receiving the data in real time. I want to give you a, a, a real example. So this is a screen snapshot of a MRI scanner, which I'm scanning a phantom uh, by scanning, for example, 10 slices. So as you can see here, uh, this scanner sending data to Guidetron. So for every, every uh, slice is being acquired. You can see this ECG waveform. The data is streamed to Guidetron. Then Guidetron starts to recon while the imaging is ongoing. So while the image entire imaging session is done, user only needs to wait a few more seconds to get all the recon data back to the scanner, as you're showing here. So we call this on-the-fly recon. This is a key concept in the Guidetron uh, framework which is really try to uh, make the clinical imaging smooth. Uh, otherwise, in this particular case, user needs to wait 20 seconds uh, without this on-the-fly recon. So Guidetron is not only an empty framework, it's a very rich framework. It uh, has been implemented a lot of functionalities and a lot of uh, this Guidetron guide chains as a, a reusable uh, imaging workflow. One particular useful one is we call generic recon chain, uh, which you can configure it to when the recon kick in. For example, in my previous example, uh, every recon is triggered when a new slice is imaged. Then uh, in this generic recon chain, there are a lot of pre-built modules. For example, uh, prepare the auto calibration lines if we use parallel imaging or compression sensing recon. Uh, calling the recon, uh, recon algorithm, then you can handle partial Fourier, apply different case space filter. You can adjust the field of view to fit the recon needs. For example, if we have a, a two times uh, image resolution, then this, this uh, gauge could do a zero padding resize. Then you can scale the image uh, properly. Then uh, the resulting image could be sending to the downstream image processing chain. Uh, to get the biomarkers, which I will demo. So uh, with this talk, um, I can't give you too much details what Gaetron has, but it's a huge framework. Uh, it has uh, many different toolboxes, for example, a complete set of non-uniform FFT for CPU and GPU. It has many solvers for different optimization problems, for example, those used in compressed sensing. Uh, it has Python calling functions, it has motion correction, um, it has a very solid implementation of 2D and 3D grippers, spirit, CI recons, recently adding the AI recons. It also has a function to uh, allow you to plug in your AI models into Gaidetron chain. So you can use Gaidetron as the machine to, to deploy your AI models. Guidetron also supporting very solid cloud and distri distributed recon, which I will show you, uh, and a lot more. So if you are interested, I put in some results here. Uh, the biggest result is Guidetron repo. So everything is open source. You can go there and clone. Uh, maybe you want to check the manual, which I list in here. Uh, last year, we also have a Guidetron school, which has uh, uh, a set of people put together very uh, nicely organized YouTube videos uh, to introduce different aspects of Guidetron. So uh, everyone is welcome to check these resources. So one thing I want to particular um, present today is to uh, allow the Guidetron to call the AI models. So if we step back, um, lots of us are now developing the deep learning models. Uh, which often require pretty um, rich in computing powers. It also requires the flexible and updated software environment. For example, you may want to use the latest PyTorch or latest TensorFlow. 
but the reality in clinical is many imaging majority of the scanner is actually uh, not equipped it with a tensor flow visit, right? It's also the computer come with it has limited powers. Um, and the, the rate, the hospital to update scanner is not really quick. Um, on average, it's really take one decade to get uh, the old scanner out of the way. So the reality is we will live with the old imaging device for quite a while. So what Gadgetron did is we put together a module called Inline AI. Um, at its core, it's a set of functionalities allow you to program very simple Python modules. Then you can plug them into Gadgetron chain, which I give you one example here. It's really come down to the minimal, what you need to provide. You give Gadgetron two functions. One is called the load AI model. Another is called apply AI model. So suppose you have an AI model, which you already pre-trained. You supply a Python script, which is really has these two functions, then Gadgetron can call, call this function with, with the imaging or case-based data uh, on your models. So to supporting the, um, this new, new frame of the AI, uh, uh, AI reconstruction and analysis, Gadgetron framework supporting many different uh, data types, for example, case-based data, image, metadata, ECG waveform, respiratory waveform, um, many different format. It's also supporting the contours landmarks. So the data format could be used for uh, a, a curate your labeled data. So lots of thoughts go into this design to support, uh, to adapt Gadgetron into this, this new time. So as a result, uh, I see a future uh, of this clinical imaging is move one step forward to which I call it cutting the middleman. So instead of sending the image, uh, then manually do analysis in a new, new time, which may come, um, the imaging data could be streamed to the computing server and the computing server could call up the models then directly give back the uh, biomarkers and the measurements, even diagnosis. So I want to give you a specific example. So in this uh, screen snapshot of MR scanners, uh, a patient is being scanned for its heart. So as you can see, ECG waveform and the data aggregation is happening. Then data is streamed to Gadgetron server and the Gadgetron server will reconstruct the image and calling an AI models, then do the analysis and generate biomarkers. So what this particular example do is this cine image is being analyzed by the AI model, which try to detect the valve uh, landmark points and the apical points. From those points, we can compute stuff like global longitudinal shortening and MAPSI and many other uh, functions. So as shown here, you can see the AI detected landmarks, which is work beautifully. And uh, uh, guided trunk could generate this uh, report and the uh, results curve sending back to the scanner. So when maybe uh, half day later, the reading doctor opened the studies. All the marriage results is already there waiting for them. So ideally, um, what I foresee in the future is with model become better and better, they will not, in most patients, they don't need to manually do this measurement. So there are many different ways to deploy Gaditron. You can put them into uh, uh, a, into a Linux server, maybe sitting in the hospital network, or you can run Gadgetron in the cloud. Or recently, we also work with uh, vendors, for example, in Siemens, you can directly run Gadgetron in the Siemens provide uh, Mars computers. Uh, the patient's information is absolutely safe because uh, no patient information is ever signed to Gadgetron process uh, as they are really not needed. Um, for the, for the computation. So due to this uh, fully automated nature of the Gaditron, it's actually turned out to be very easily scaled. So over the past few years, we had established a global network. Currently, it's more than 60 hospitals worldwide, as I showing you here. They are using Gaditron software uh, for many different applications. And as a result, the huge data is generated to fit the, today's AI world. 
uh, in particular, at NIH, we had accumulated more than 100,000 patients of data, many, many terabytes. Um, with a data size that large, uh, you can actually see something. For example, uh, I point you out, say, when the COVID hit the world, we have a significant drop of the data acquisition, but it's gradually recovered. So to support such activities, there are infrastructures was be built, built around Gaidetron. So in particular, at its core, it's a continuous integration, continuous testing framework, uh, which uh, the key is every push we, we push to the users, it has to be fully tested. Uh, the way it works is when we change the code, push a commit to GitHub, for example, then auto integration test is triggered. Once all the tests go through, which we have hundreds of gig of testing data, then only that a new Docker image will be built and pushed to, the, uh, to our Docker register on the uh, Microsoft Azure cloud and be available worldwide. So the same Docker image could be easily fit into the Microsoft cloud, for example, or Amazon AWS. So in Gaidetron, it has a native cloud support. You can start in several uh, Gaidetron servers. They will automatically know each other and communicate each other. Then user can configure, how do I want to distribute my data? For example, in my previous case, I can let every server to recon one slice of the Kadex Zini. Then while the image acquisition is done, all this reconstruction can be done in parallel. So one example is uh, I have this uh, compressed sensing recon, then um, it can turn the image uh, from on the left to on the right to be very beautiful image. But if we don't do the cloud recon, then user has to wait like 10 minutes. But if we do the cloud recon, the time is reduced to one minute. So we regularly maintain two data centers in the world. One is in UK, in Europe, another is in uh, North America. Um, Roughly 15 hospitals is using them uh, daily. Uh, what I want to say is for Gaidetron setup, there's no difference if you want to do cloud uh, computing or you want to do the computing in your hospital network or on your own computers. Um, from the software point of view, everything is unified. Uh, the latest development is all the AI models I'm showing you and the many more, they all run no change on the cloud. So for example, I can run this AI senior analysis on the cloud, uh, on the cloud reconstructed image. Then when user run this application on the cloud, they go to the CNA uh, analysis report back. So Gaidetron enables lots of uh, new applications, which I will give you a few examples. For example, we have a new set of AI recon come online which can significantly improve image qualities, as I'm showing here. Uh, for example, uh, the, the latest development, actually, uh, we are, I think we are getting to uh, make the you know, uh, AI model, which is rather insensitive to the acceleration up to, for example, rate five for the clinical usage. Um, as I'm showing you here, no matter your query is four times acceleration, all five image come out from the AI model is actually pretty good. So uh, let me give you another example for the complete uh, AI recon and image uh, analysis uh, in one workflow. So we want to give a cardiologist the ability to quantify the CNA image uh, automatically. So we have several models built with Gaidetron. Once the CNA image is reconstructed, we will first detect the valve plane, then apply the model to detect end and IP counters from, for the end diastolic phase and for the end systolic phase. Then based on those results, Gaidetron will autom automatically do the analysis then sending this kind of report back to the scanner and available in the backup database, which gives them ejection fraction diastolic volume, central and central. The whole beauty is as the developer, you will control everything of it, which if you want new biomarkers, you can add them. As the users, you don't need to worry any of it because everything just show up on your imaging device and your database uh, while you start to uh, report the, this patient. 
So another example is uh, we are not only limited to cardiac. So we did uh, work for the body imaging, for example, for the multi-slice parallel scans. Uh, we can do this multi-organ analysis and give them uh, all kinds of biomarkers. So all these are the possibilities of using Gaiditron. Um, so I hope I gave you some examples to uh, uh, get you interested. But if you step back, look at the bigger pictures, Gaiditron is really is belong to the computing infrastructure. It's give you the uniform computing infrastructure, either local and on cloud. And based on these computing infrastructures, now we have two development. One is AI development, another is imaging development. In the imaging development, it's MR sequence, MR reconstruction, image qualities, artifacts detection, central and central. On the AI development, it's new reconstruction, automated uh, quantification, biomarker extraction, diagnosis. Gaditron is the platform. You can integrate them all in one. You can consider your clinical applications, not as the isolated steps, but you can consider them as a uniform process. How will we maximize the usability and how can we favor the, um, the end users to the max? So, which I call this new time is AI powered imaging, which really cover acquisition, recon and computing analysis, diagnosis, and a lot more. And everything you build could be delivered to the end users through this platform. So this concludes my talk. Thank you for your attention.